Welcome to AviaFly, the YouTube history channel with aircraft, airlines, and aviation podcasts. If it adds value to you, please give the video a like. Today's topic Aerospace Lines 377 PG Pregnant Guppy. The Aerospace Lines Pregnant Guppy was a large, wide bodied cargo aircraft built in the United States and used for ferrying outsized cargo items, the most significant components of NASA's Apollo program. The Pregnant Guppy was the first of the Guppy aircraft produced by Aerospace Lines, and the design inspired later designs like the jet-powered Airbus Beluga and Boeing Dreamlifter. Development In 1960, NASA was using barges to transport increasingly large rocket components from manufacturers on the West Coast to test and launch sites on the East Coast, a slow and expensive method. Meanwhile, U.S. airlines were disposing of their obsolete Boeing 377 Stratocruisers in favor of the newer jet engine airliners. One evening, friends Jack Conroy, Lee Mansdorf, and others were discussing the problems NASA was having transporting the rocket booster stages aboard ships through the Gulf of Mexico. Aircraft broker Mansdorf had recently purchased several surplus Boeing Stratocruisers but wasn't sure what to do with them. Conroy figured they could take one of the Stratocruisers, enlarge the fuselage big enough to hold a rocket booster, and contract with NASA to fly the boosters from California to Florida. One of the options discussed was opening the top fuselage hinge, and the cargo would be lifted using a crane. This idea was scrapped early on for obvious reasons. Conroy, an ex-USAF pilot, realized that these aircraft could be modified to transport the large but relatively light rocket components. Conroy presented his plans for an extensively modified Stratocruiser to NASA, where an official commented that the bloated aircraft resembled a pregnant guppy. Although NASA was lukewarm on the concept, Conroy mortgaged his house and founded Aerospace Lines International to build and operate the concept aircraft. The Boeing 377 Stratocruiser was a large long-range airliner developed from the C-97 Stratofreighter military transport, itself a derivative of the B-29 Superfortress. The Stratocruiser's first flight was on July 8, 1947. Conversion work was undertaken by Onmark Engineering. The pregnant guppy, registered in 1024 v was built from an ex-Pan Am airframe. A 5-meter section from an ex-British Overseas Airways Corporation aircraft was added immediately behind the wing. A new upper fuselage of 6-meter diameter was added, giving the aircraft a triple-bubble appearance when viewed from the front. The entire rear section, including tail surfaces, was detachable to allow cargo to be loaded directly into the fuselage. The wing, engines, tail, nose, and cockpit were unchanged. The power plant consisted of four Pratt & Whitney R4360B6 WASP major 28-cylinder air-cooled radial piston engines with 3,500 horsepower each. Additionally, for Aerojet General, 15 KS-1000A1 solid fuel-assisted takeoff rocket engines were available, each with 4.4 kN thrust for 15 seconds. The pregnant guppy first flew with the extended fuselage on top of the original on September 19, 1962. Jack Conroy was the test pilot, with Clay Lacey in the right seat. When Van Nuys Traffic Control realized Conroy intended to take off, they notified police and fire departments to be on alert. However, the colossal aircraft performed flawlessly, the only difference in handling being a slight decrease in speed caused by the extra drag of the larger fuselage. The next day September 20, out of cash and need a more firm commitment from NASA about the contract for the Guppy program, Jack headed east with the pregnant Guppy on a demonstration tour. With special permission from the FAA, he headed for Las Vegas for the Air Force Association convention so long as he avoided significant population centers. Then to Oklahoma City, Tulsa, and NASA's Space Center in Houston. Then Conroy with his adventuresome crew set their sights for the Marshall Space Flight Center at Huntsville. A mixed group of skeptics and enthusiasts saw the guppy, including the director of MSFC, Werner von Braun. Conroy's dash had long appealed to Von Braun, and now Von Braun was delighted. Most of the people seemed pretty doubtful of Guppy's potential. 
Some high-ranking people stood, shook their heads, and said, It is impossible for this plane to fly. Some expressed concern about attaching the rear of the fuselage with bolts. Jack needed to pull off a convincing test of Guppy's ability. Without enough time to load sufficient ballast in sandbags, a full load of fuel was put on to give the needed additional weight. Herman Kroger, a longtime member of Von Braun's group and former test pilot, and Julian Hamilton, a key Saturn logistics program manager, went up for the first flight as official MSFC observers. Kroger was so excited after the flight about the pregnant guppy's abilities, he lapsed into German when describing it to his colleagues. Von Braun was so interested that he wanted to go up for a flight. To the dismay of many presents, he crawled aboard the guppy and took off. For the second time, Jack demonstrated the airplane's ability to maintain course and altitude with engines numbers 1 and 2 out, with only light control input. Von Braun was enthusiastic. Informal contract talks began that day. The pregnant guppy's performance in the air was slightly less than the B-377s. The maximum cruise was reduced to 250 miles per hour with a 33,000 pounds payload aboard down from the Stratocruiser's max cruise of 265 miles per hour. Conroy wrote to Werner von Braun that the Guppy had a maximum cruise of 250 miles per hour with a guaranteed 235 miles per hour cruise. The airplane had cost over $1 million. This aircraft was designed as a standalone system of loading. A specially designed fixture was bolted to hard points on the rear fuselage. The tail fixture was designed to fold up and travel with the guppy. Loading operations began with setting up the tail fixture and scaffolding. Only after the fixture was attached could the fuselage split. The aft section was rolled out of the way and loading operations could begin. The inscription on the fuselage just in front of the open access door reads, Largest Airplane in the World. In late 1962 the pregnant guppy was flown to NASA's flight test center at Edwards AFB, California, for more intensive flight testing. This testing continued into early 1963, with the only mishap during the water ballast testing when the water system malfunctioned and flooded the airplane floor. By this time, NASA management began pushing for the use of the guppy as soon as possible, with numerous letters and phone calls going to FAA officials. NASA was planning the first two-stage launch of the Saturn I, the SA-5. Because of time lost due to testing problems with the SA-5's first stage, time was becoming critical. The Guppy promised to fly the S-45 stage to the Cape in 18 hours instead of 18 to 25 days. This time was needed to ship through the Panama Canal and the Gulf of Mexico. The pregnant guppy was declared a public aircraft on July 10, 1963. Military or government aircraft are usually public aircraft and are not subject to FAA regulations. In the pregnant guppy's case, NASA was the sponsoring government body attesting to its airworthiness. MSFC immediately conducted a transcontinental trial flight with a simulated S-4 stage aboard. NASA relied on the Guppy in the late summer months and into the fall. In mid-September, the Guppy flew the S-45 stage to Cape Kennedy from Sacramento, California to launch the SA-5. Carrying the S-4 Saturn I rocket stage, the Guppy saved three weeks' transit time versus barge for a cost of $16, equivalent to $139.79 today, per mile. While delivering the Apollo SM-009 on October 23, 1965, the pregnant guppy was delayed at Ellington Air Force Base, Texas, for three and a half days while waiting for an engine change. The incident was reviewed by NASA officials during the succeeding weeks. Aerospace Lines was requested to place spare engines not only in Houston but also at other strategic locations on the usual air route from Long Beach to Kennedy Space Center to avoid this type of delay in the future. There was a big scare on September 27, 1966, when Guppy stopped at Dover, Delaware to refuel. A fire broke out inside the aircraft. Luckily it was discovered in time, preventing damage to the Guppy. In the summer of 1963, 
the pregnant guppy began flying NASA cargo. Among its early duties was transporting the first and second stages of the Gemini program's Titan II from Baltimore, Maryland, to Cape Canaveral. The space program was growing through the 1960s, and it became clear that one aircraft could not carry the entire transport load. So 25 Stratocruisers and ex-USAF C-97s had to be purchased to build four Super Guppy aircraft. These aircraft were longer and more spacious than the original. The various Guppy aircraft served throughout the 1960s, 1970s, and beyond, initially transporting space components, and later, as NASA scaled down its operations after the success of the Apollo program, transporting airliner sections. The pregnant guppy was sold to American Jet Industries and was finally scrapped at Van Nuys in 1979. General Characteristics Crew, 3 Capacity, 15,422 kg Length, 38.71 meters Wingspan, 43.05 meters Diameter, 6.20 meters cabin height Height, 9.53 meters to top of fuselage, 12 meters overall. Wing area, 164.3 square meters. Cargo compartment, 826 cubic meters. Empty weight, 41,277 kilograms. Max takeoff weight, 60,328 kilograms. Later increased. Propellers, for bladed Hamilton Standard Model 34E6387 constant speed fully feathering propellers. Maximum speed, 320 knots. Cruise speed, 195 knots. This was the Aviafly podcast. We would be pleased about your like and your subscription because this is the only way we can continue to offer you exciting podcasts from the world of aviation.